welcome back. You know you can't live forever, but maybe your social media can. Silicon Valley startup Eterna.me aims to make realistic avatars of people to interact with their descendants in the distant future. Now, nearly 40,000 people have signed up for the service since launched two years ago, and now they're using a new strategy, creating artificially intelligent systems by integrating them with social media. Let me welcome theoretical physicist and famed futurist. It's Dr. Michio Kaku. Welcome back. Glad to be on. So what it does is uh, it, it takes your digital footprint, footprint right. over a number of years mm -hmm. and all the ways you, you interact with very social media That's right. over a, a number of years and decades, stores all of that into some sort of an AI component, and then your loved ones, when you pass, can ask questions and apparently your consciousness can answer them. That seems so futuristic. Yeah, well, you know, digital immortality is going to be a multi-billion dollar industry in the future. Yeah. Death and taxes. Why does death have to be a constant of life? Think about it. We're going to have a library of souls. Mm -hmm. You go to the library and you'll talk to Winston Churchill. I'll talk to Albert Einstein. Is that who you'd like to talk to most? That's right. A holographic image of Einstein will come out with all his quirks, memories, personality, and you'll chat with him. Is there enough of him to create one of these? Unfortunately not, but maybe there's enough of you so that you your grandkids will go to the library and have a great conversation with you 100 years from now. Now, it's interesting because uh, you have talked about uh, Connectome, mm -hmm. which is the, uh, it, it will sort of pick up where the human genome left off. What is that exactly? That's right. The next step beyond this, getting your digital footprint, is to map the entire human brain. Mm -hmm. A billion dollars has already been allocated by the European Union and the United States government to map all the neurons of the brain containing all your memories, your personality quirks, your sensations, emotions, everything. So, so do you think memories are physically stored somewhere? Oh yeah, definitely. They're stored on the cortex, uh, the surface of the brain, mm -hmm. meaning that one day you'll have a disk that has all your consciousness on it, and you'll be able to perhaps put it into a robot or whatever, and you'll be immortal. Even if your physical body decays, yeah. your consciousness, your memories, your personality quirks will live forever. So, Digital immortality. Yeah, so immortal consciousness is sort of the ultimate narcissism. That's right. I mean, why not live forever? Yeah. I mean, why do we have to die, right? Because some people are boring, and some people are bad, and maybe we don't want them to live forever. But yeah. immortality, do you think that is the, the ultimate goal of human beings? Well, that's going to be big business in the future. Not just digital immortality, but biological immortality as well. So anti-aging programs and that's right. flipping we're now switches on genes. Exactly. We're now beginning to understand the genes that control the aging process. Yeah. Aging, we now know, yep. is the buildup of errors in the body. Genetic errors, cellular mm -hmm. errors. That's all aging is. We have error correcting mechanisms now that are being isolated. So that one day we'll be able to extend the living body mm -hmm. rather than having a digital footprint that that's animated and talks to you and tells jokes, will have a real biological entity. Well, speaking of animation, will we be able to reanimate those whom we have lost? Will there be a way of resuscitating dead tissue and systems? I or is it, is it just like, you are alive now, but I will be able to give you certain immunotherapies and drugs, and you will reverse age like Benjamin Button. Will that be possible? Well, once you die, I think that's it. Yeah. But however, we're going to get carbon copies of you. We're going to be able to extend the life that you are living. The bad news, however, is that our generation could be the last generation to die biologically. Yeah. Our grandkids may decide to hit the age of 30 and stop. Yeah. They may simply want to be age 30 for the next several hundred years. Wow, it's like but, talk everlasting. <laughs> right, but our generation, unfortunately, is not quite ready for that yet. Our generation may be the last generation to die biologically. That's really interesting. But and digitally, our personalities, our quirks, our memories, all that digital footprint can be homogenized using artificial intelligence to create a cyber you. But then we're going to have to zero. We're going to have to colonize other planets because there won't be enough room for everyone here if no one or nothing dies. No, but you look, look at Japan. Yeah. The Japanese women for 20 years have held the world's record for longevity. Yes. And Japan is contracting. Why is that? It's contracting, big, probably because of the diet and exercise. Yeah. But it's contracting physically. It will contract at the rate of about a million people per year because mm -hmm. people, when they live longer, are prosperous, don't have that many kids. We have so much more to talk about. Please come back because I love this subject. Mm -hmm. And I know you are so well-versed and it's endlessly fascinating. Thank you, Dr. Conker. Okay. Appreciate it.